In this video, I want to share with you my framework for looking for altcoins to purchase in this bear market, especially towards these low prices. And if we still potentially get a major capitulation, this is the framework that I'm going to be following to look for coins to buy that I think is lower risk, but still high potential reward for 5, 10, maybe 20x in the next bull market. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please subscribe down below. Click that notification bell to get alerts of future updates. If you want to get on my email list so I can let you know whenever I publish a new video, first link in the description down below. Click that link, enter your name and email, and then I can notify you whenever there's something important. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or join our free public Telegram, the links are in the description down below. All right, so being in this bearish trend and this bearish market in the crypto space with prices having come down significantly from the 2021 highs in terms of altcoins some of them peaked in may 2021 and are down 80 or 90 percent in terms of bitcoin that peaked in november of 2021 and it's down from 69,000 to just under 30,000. so we're getting into this point where things are starting to look interesting where there is an opportunity and like i've been saying for a long time is that in the bearish periods that is the point of maximum opportunity that is when you can buy altcoins super cheap and that is when you can get those crazy returns that people always show off in the bull markets where you're getting 10x, 20x, 50x, maybe even more than that. Those kind of returns typically don't come from buying the tops of these bull markets, which is when most people tend to get interested. I see it myself, the engagement on my YouTube videos, on my social media goes crazy during the tops of markets and during these lows in the bearish periods, there's just about 90% less engagement and most people just aren't interested in crypto and rightfully so it goes against human psychology, right? Like uh, you don't want to buy when the prices are going lower because you think it's going to keep going lower, going lower, but you only start getting interested after it's going a lot higher, you know, after it's up 5x or 10x and then you think, oh, it's going to go up another 10x and maybe it does, but more often than not, it doesn't. So we are here at intelligent cryptocurrency and the intelligent thing to do with investing is to buy when markets are down, when there are assets that are undervalued, when nobody is interested in them, when they are dirt cheap. You want to get in there, accumulate, and then when the prices go a lot higher, that's when you want to start offloading positions into those people that FOMO buy. That is how you make profits in these markets. So let me dive into a little PowerPoint presentation that I've prepared for you to walk you through what I'm looking for and which type of coins that I'm going to be looking to buy. By the way, if you want more of this educational type of content, you want research into coins, you want daily updates, join my Intelligent Cryptocurrency VIP membership. It is all inclusive research, updates, community, educational training, a private discord, all of that is there. It is the second link in the description. If you click on that, you will be able to sign up risk-free 60 day trial period. Come and try it out and get all that info to help you better navigate the markets. Okay, so welcome to this little presentation where I call it the bear market altcoin criteria. This is for altcoins that I'm personally looking for to be able to find these lower risk quality altcoins for a high probability, hopefully 10x or more in the next one to two years in the next bull market. And obviously, as a disclaimer, you know, everything I do is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. So I'm just sharing this with you for informational purposes. Please invest at your own risk and your own responsibility. Okay, so let's start out with the altcoin risks. Having been in the space for a few years now and having seen the 2017 boom and the 2018 bust and now the 2020 boom and the 2022 bust, this is what I've seen in the altcoins that we've seen. So the risk is that previous altcoins, even if they did well, there's no guarantee that this altcoin is going to succeed. You basically have to look at an altcoin as a tech startup because that is essentially what it is. Usually there's a team, there's a, there's a founder, there's costs involved, operating expenses, maybe they have an office and headquarters and they're pr uh, paying programmers and paying for servers and all that kind of stuff. So it really is uh, basically a tech business with a financial coin element tied to it with the speculation on that coin, of course, too. So it's not just about the bull and bear market. You can't just blindly hold on to an altcoin because there is absolutely no guarantee that it is going to come back in the future because of the risk of these startups, right? If the startup fails, if they run out of funding, all that kind of stuff, 
the coin is most likely going to die, right? So look, if the project fails to achieve adoption in any way in future also, they can be working on something for years, they can be doing everything right, but if they have a product that just doesn't fit the market or there's no interest for it or they can't gain traction or, you know, after a couple of years, the tech changes, the space changes and the whole project that they were working on becomes unnecessary, what is going to happen to that coin? An example of that would be something like 10x pay that was back in 2017. The whole altcoin was based around the ability of bringing uh, cryptocurrency to Visa debit cards that you could use. That was the whole coin and the whole project was based around that. Now they had the first mover advantage at the time. Things went crazy. The whole crypto market went crazy. But as you know, at this point, basically every major exchange is offering their own Visa debit card. So the whole point of this 10x coin, uh, 10x pay that they were working on bringing a Visa card to crypto, that's completely gone because all the other exchanges are doing it and now that coin basically is completely dead. So you have to be aware of this. As I said, another thing is that the coin is not guaranteed to go up again in future or even uh, reclaim their past all-time highs or even come anywhere close to that. Um, just because we're having a new bull market, we've seen that now, is that coins from 2017 that did really well. We had this major bull market in 2020 and 2021. A lot of those 2017 coins did not reach their all-time highs again, even though we had a major, major boom in the crypto markets. And obviously, that is sad and disappointing. And holding on to a coin like that is a huge opportunity cost. Um, you can look at some of the older coins like XRP, uh, didn't go back to its all-time high. BCH did an EOS. Those 2017 coins that did absolutely phenomenal where there was a lot of hype in the 2017 bull market, basically also some of them have basically just failed to achieve adoption. They've re revealed themselves as unnecessary. All those things I've just shared above. And then if you're holding a coin like that, there is the opportunity cost of your capital being locked up in that for the duration of the bull market. And then there's all these other new projects that come out, for example, like Solana that launched uh, in this new bull market that was completely new. And if you had that capital free, you have it available to speculate on newer projects versus holding it in older coins that may never recover once again. And then a risk is of course, as the market grows and as the regulation grows, is that coins may just be delisted from exchanges, uh, maybe for regulatory reasons, whatever the case might be. But of course, if a coin gets delisted from major exchanges and it's not trading anymore, what is going to happen to the price? Uh, basically, the, the coin is going to die. So these are all things from the past cycles that are worth paying attention to and that you should consider um, when you're purchasing altcoins for the next bull run and that you maybe plan on holding for the next couple of years. So after knowing that, let me share with you the four criteria I'm looking for in this 2022 bear market for the coins I'm planning on buying during this bearish period and if we potentially get a capitulation event. So the first criteria is obvious, it's the long-term survival of the coin. If the coin is not gonna survive, the project isn't gonna survive, the price is obviously gonna trend to zero and I'm gonna lose the investment. There's no point in investing in anything that isn't gonna be here you know, in a year or five years from now. So how likely is it that this coin is still gonna be here in five years from now? And that's something you just have to ask yourself by looking at underlying factors of the project and what they are working on, okay? So who is the founder? Who is the team behind this? Do they have experience? Or do they have a track record of abandoning projects? For example, with EOS, which was a major project back in 2017 that got all the hype, it raised like $4 billion or something. Um, and, and obviously right now, it didn't really end up doing anything. The thing with that, is that the founder behind it, Dan Larimer, he had a history of creating projects and abandoning them after time. And if that's the case, what is the likelihood he's gonna do it again and again and again, right? So that's something you wanna pay attention to. Who's the founder? What is their track record? What is the team behind it? How much runway is there, okay? This is a startup, they have real expenses. They have employees, devs, um, office space, whatever the case is. So you wanna look at how much funds do they have available, you know, in their treasury? What is their burn rate? because right? they might have funds, but if they're spending insane amounts of money every month just to keep their project going, and they can't sustain a multi-year multi, multi -year bear market, well, then they're gonna run out of funds on what is gonna happen 
to their coin and the price of the coin, right? So do they have a working product? I do think that's very important. A lot of these altcoins are all hype and basically have nothing to show for it and are incapable of creating anything that will ever actually get any real adoption. So that, that's important for me to look at in terms of deciding the long-term survival of an altcoin. Do they generate income? Very, very important, right? If a, if a project and an altcoin is generating income, well, that means they're going to be able to sustain themselves for a long time, which means they can reinvest, which increases the likelihood of long-term survival. Now, in the altcoin world, in the altcoin space, there are very, very few projects that are actually generating an income and that are actually cash flow positive, that are making a profit. So it is rare, but they do exist. And I will share with you a little bit later in the video some examples of these coins that you can look at. Is the adoption increasing? Do they have some sort of app or working product where they are gaining users or where they're gaining signups? Again, that is also very important to long-term survival because even though many of these projects have raised tens of millions of dollars, if they don't have a working product and they don't have a user base and they're not generating income, what is the chance that they're gonna survive long-term? Sure, they might get some sort of uh, scam pump or maybe we get a bull run sooner than expected and their coin pumps as a result of the whole overall market pumping. But in terms of as an investment, it could be difficult to justify that because what is the reason for them surviving long term if they don't have these things. So second criteria is the track record. Basically, how long has the coin been around and how did it perform during previous bear and bull markets? That's an easy one. You know, if it's a brand new coin that was launched at the top of the bull market and looking at the first criteria, all those criteria, if they meet them or don't meet them. Basically, if a coin has been around and they continue to build uh, on their product and they're making progress, um, whether it's bull or bear market, that's obviously a little bit more comforting versus something that hasn't been around and has no track record. And we don't really know if it was just a one hit wonder that did well because of the bull market and the timing that they launched. And you know, so that's another factor to look at. Then we have the upside potential to consider. So basically what was the previous all time high of this coin compared to where it is now? And realistically, just it's, it's always a guess, of course, but realistically, what are the chances that it gets back there or higher? And that is where the first criteria, all those factors play a role because the more of those factors that there are, if they have a working product, increasing adoption, and they're doing all those things right, well, then there is a chance that we go back to the all time higher or maybe even far beyond if they do actually succeed in what they're looking to do rather than it just being a hype coin launched in the bull market that is never going to achieve anything and what realistically are the chances that it actually gets back to its all time high. And then the fourth point is basically, is there some utility or staking to holding the coin? So again, we don't know how long the bear market is gonna go. We don't know how long it's gonna last. In a worst case scenario where you might need to hold this coin for two or three or four or five years, is there going to be an edge to you or a benefit to you for holding this coin? Some coins give you absolutely nothing. For example, you buy Bitcoin, you get nothing with that. You don't get interest, you don't get utility. Okay, it's just the Bitcoin. But with some of these altcoins, you can actually stake them, right? And you can make five or 10 or even 20% a year just for holding those coins. And then if you're stuck in a situation where you have to hold the coin for two or three or four years, well, you can increase your balance by 10 or 20 or 30%, which if the coin ends up being successful and rises in price in the next bull run, can obviously really add to the bottom line. Another thing is, of course, uh, if the coin has utility. So for example, um, if there is an exchange coin that you can use, that you can get a discount on trading fees or using an ecosystem or something like that. Of course, every benefit is a benefit if you get stuck holding a coin um, for a longer period of time. So let me give you an example of some of these coins that I think meet these criteria that I just shared with you and that I'll personally be looking at buying and accumulating during this bearish period and during an accumulation. So I think that an example of our coins that meets these criteria are, for example, the exchange coins. So like Binance coin, BNB, FTT is FTX, CRO, Crypto.com, KCS, KuCoin.com, Wu is the WuX exchange. Okay, so let's walk through this long term survival. How likely is it that this coin is going to be here in five years from now? Exchanges, these ones that I've mentioned, they're big exchanges. They have licenses, they have headquarters, and um, I think unless they have some serious issue, hack or regulatory issue or something like that, it's pretty likely that 
probably they're all still going to be here in five years from now. Who's the founder and team? Obviously, all that information is available. How much runway do they have left? They're obviously making a lot of money. So again, that'll come to the next point. And do they have a working product? Do they generate income? Yes, these exchanges are highly profitable. In these bull runs, they make hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars in profit. So they have a huge amount of money. They have a working product, right? They, they have an exchange. They have users. They're growing in adoption, right? They have tens of millions of users. Crypto.com, for example, just posted in a tweet that they have 50 million users. So we're still only at 300 million people, roughly, that have crypto. If that continues to grow to like a billion people, then in the next bull market, it's likely that these exchanges are going to acquire more users, which results in more income, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So in terms of long-term survival for these exchanges, I think it's pretty high. In terms of track record, how long has the coin been around? How did it perform? Some of these coins have been around or some of these exchanges have been around for longer, right? Binance has been around since 2017. FTX, I think 2019, um, and, and some of them a little bit more recent, but they have track records. So upside potential. So what were the previous all-time highs, right? And you can go and look at these prices, where they are today, and what were their all-time highs. And realistically, what is the chance that it gets back there? And based on their long-term survival, working product, do they generate income, user adoption increasing? There are also utility coins in many cases here with these exchange coins, again, I think there's a pretty decent chance they go back to all-time highs and higher. And then in terms of utility and staking, some of these coins actually do have a benefit. Again, you can use them for trading fee discounts or some of them are actually stakeable within the platform that earn your interest. So that is why I say these exchange coins in terms of these four criteria, buying them low, right? I'm not saying today, I'm not saying this is the ultimate price, but accumulating them throughout the lows of the bear market and the capitulation, if we get that, and we get some really, really cheap prices on them, I think compared to most of the other altcoins, where there's a lot less certainty in their recovery, I think the chance of these still being here and recovering, and even if they don't give you a 50x or even a 20x, even if they give you a five to 10x in the next bull market, I think there's a higher probability with these coins than with a lot of the other altcoins where they don't have any of these criteria. So just as an example, let's go look at the crypto.com chart, for example, and you can see the all time high was about 95 cents. I think it was 97, but let's say 95 cents. Let's say a dollar um, to keep it easy. And we're roughly at 20 cents. So even if it goes back to the all time high from here, that would be a 5x. Now, if we do get a lower prices and potentially capitulation, which I do think still is a decent possibility, then we might end up seeing another 30 or 50% lower than where we're currently at. So if we can get this to below 10 cents and you can buy below 10 cents and it goes back to a dollar at some point in future, even if that takes one or two or three or four years, then you've got a 10 X on top of that. You can take the CRO coin and you can actually stake it for 12% a year. So in the time that you're holding it, you get those rewards, you increase the balance, which then obviously will be variable if this goes back up again. So it's the same thing with the other coins. If we look at Binance coin, for example, you can see the all time high over here was about 691. It's at $307 right now. So if it ever goes back there again, we're looking at about a two X right now, but we already dropped to as low as 218. So that would have been almost three X. And if we do end up retracing this move and we get back below a hundred dollars, don't know if it's going to happen, but it is possible. If we get back below $100, then if it goes back to the all time high again, that's almost a 7x. And realistically, looking at what Binance is doing, how um, they're all around the world, how they're looking at increasing compliance, partnerships, all that kind of stuff. Realistically, what is the chance that BNB gets back to $700 at some point? I think it's a pretty decent chance. Again, there's no guarantees with anything, but when you're looking at this compared to other altcoins, and you're looking at the criteria that these coins that I've mentioned, these exchange coins that they actually meet, I think the chances are better than gambling on random coins with crazy promises that may never deliver and where the coin may actually never recover in price. So this is just my framework that I'm sharing with you. These are coins that I'm looking at accumulating. Again, you have to make your own decision. I can't tell you what to do. It's not financial advice, but having been in this market and learning from the previous bull and bear markets and seeing what has been happening. I think this is a lower risk, higher probability strategy 
in terms of accumulating altcoins. And like I've said at the beginning and keep saying, these bear markets are going to be the ultimate opportunity to be able to purchase altcoins on the cheap and get those ROIs. Most people end up buying towards the tops of these huge moves and then not only is there very little upside left, but there's a lot of downside left and a lot of time left before those coins ever recover if they do. The times you wanna buy is during the bearish periods because then you get these crazy runs up and that is when you get 5X, 10X, 20X, 50X. And I can see the response, the engagement is way down compared to in these bull markets and that's obvious because the hype isn't there, the euphoria isn't there. Now, it is really the intelligent people, the smart people, the people who are committed to their future success who are willing to do this, which takes effort, it takes discipline, which a lot of people actually don't have. They'd rather go and watch Netflix or you know go out and party or do something else rather than actually educate themselves and really figure out when is the best time to invest, how do I invest, what do I invest in, to be able to do that during the times when nobody wants it, to be able to get rich during those bull markets, offload those positions, and then you know enjoy those profits and have a much better quality of life thanks to the decisions that you made during these bearish periods. If you like this kind of training and if you like this kind of explanation and this education that I shared with you in this video, there's a whole lot more where that comes from inside my Intelligent Cryptocurrency VIP membership. So that's all sorts of tutorials exactly like this, trainings, beginners courses, trading courses, a monthly newsletter update with research and insights and TA, all of that is there as one complete package and you get access to all the other members, over 1,500 members from all around the world in our private Discord chat group. It's available 24 7, 365. I'm in there every day too, sharing updates and insights. And really, if you are looking at positioning yourself in this market and you are looking to set yourself up for success in the next bull market, Come and join us and increase your edge and your chance of success. It's completely risk-free, 60-day money-back guarantee. Come and sign up today. It is the second link in the description down below. Sign up, get access to everything. And if for whatever reason you're not happy within 60 days, you can get a full refund. There's literally no better deal out there than this. Other people don't offer these guarantees. I do it because I know what I've created and I know it's very helpful. So hopefully see you inside. Second link in the description down below. Thanks for watching, guys. Smash the like button. Do leave a comment, share this. I appreciate that. It helps the video get out to more people. Have an awesome day and I will see you in the next video.